Right guys, let's just take a little bit of time to look at the functions of the skeleton, uh, the functions of the skeletal system. I'm going to talk to you about eight functions uh, in this video, and they are on the screen now. We're going to look at supporting framework, protection, attachment for skeletal muscle, blood cell production, store of minerals, leverage, weight bearing, and reducing friction across a joint. So these are the eight um, I guess you could say primary functions of the skeleton, not the sole functions, um, but they'll do for us for now. So first of all then, supporting framework. What do I mean by that? Um, well, I simply mean that it's a framework around which the rest of the body uh, can fit and, and be built, if you like. Uh, the, the skeleton itself forms the, the basic shape, the basic structure of the body uh, and supports the soft tissues um, that, that are embedded uh, beneath the skeleton, around the skeleton, on top of the skeleton and so on. So the skeleton forms the basic stru structure and then the rest of the soft tissues are arranged around it. And the size and the shape of the skeleton pretty much um, determines, is determined genetically and thereby determines the rest of the body shape. So your height, for example, is basically determined uh, by the size and shape of your skeleton. Uh, secondly, we've got protection, um, and some parts of the skeleton, um, particularly um, parts of the axial skeleton, uh, the, they're, they're one of their key functions is to protect whatever's underneath them. Um, so you can think about the flat bones of the cranium um, uh, that make up the, the cranium and make up the skull, they're obviously protecting uh, the brain and the brain stem. Um, and then various other irregular bones, so the pelvis uh, protecting the reproductive organs, um, the vertebral column protecting uh, the central nervous system uh, and so on. Uh, so second function of the skeleton would be protection. Thirdly, um, the skeleton is where muscles attach. Uh, so attachment for skeletal muscle uh, allows movement, of course. Um, um, it, you can see in another one of my videos uh, where I describe um, Origins and insertions of muscles and origin is where uh, is the bone on which a muscle begins uh, or starts and then the insertion is the bone that it goes to if you like and when the muscle contracts it pulls those two bones closer together at least when it's a concentric contraction and of course the muscle itself is linked to the skeleton um, by uh, by tendons so the fibrous material that, that around the sheath of the muscle that, that um, eventually becomes a tendon at the end of the muscle attaches onto and into the skeleton so that when muscles contract it's the skeleton that moves and of course various muscles attaching attached in various places around the skeleton produce of course different joints and uh, movements and, and of, of all sorts uh, and again we'll look at those in, a, in another video. Fourthly we've got um, the fact that the skeletal system is the source of blood cell production. Um, so in particular in some of the long bones um, where there's a substantial amount of bone marrow, uh, we get some blood cell production. So red blood cells and white blood cells are produced inside uh, long bones. So in the, in the cavities inside where the bone marrow is, the red bone marrow and the yellow bone marrow inside the cavity, which is known as the medullary cavity, um, that is where we find blood cell production happening um, and that the name for blood cell production that the proper scientific term is hematopoiesis hematopoiesis means the, um, the creation of blood cells um, so we get red blood cells as I've said and white blood cells um, and they are then once they've been created they're put into the uh, into the circulation into the circulation into the CV system um, and there was a particular hormone that controls uh, the, the amount of, um, of hematopoiesis that occurs, the amount of uh, red and white blood cell production, and that hormone is erythropoietin. Erythropoietin, or uh, generally, because it's such a long word, generally referred to as just EPO. EPO. So EPO is a substance that's naturally occurring in the body. Uh, it's a hormone that stimulates increased blood cell production. You might have heard of it in the context of blood doping, 
um, because essentially what it does is it creates more or extra uh, blood cells. So if you're a, a cyclist, for example, and you inject additional EPO, you're going to create or you're going to produce a, an increased volume of red blood cells, and that's going to give you uh, an advantage in aerobic activities. Uh, moving on then to uh, store of minerals. So a further function of the skeleton is that the skeleton stores uh, several minerals, the most important of which are calcium and phosphorus. And again, these are mostly in the long bones, uh, but in the outer layer of the bones, uh, in, the, in the hard outer layer um, of the bones, um, the minerals there are laid down in part of the, the bone matrix and help the bone matrix be solid. So you'll have known since you were since you were little that drinking milk makes your bones um, more more dense, um, and that's because of the calcium in the milk and so on uh, that finds its way into the bones. And provided there's sufficient calcium and phosphorus in the diet, then our bones retain some of that, and it's it's that that can that uh, causes the bones to be nice and solid and dense. So it's mostly in long bones, uh, obviously very much connected with bone growth and bone health. Um, and um, and bone repair as well, um, and that that store of minerals is there for when it's needed. Uh, the calcium and the phosphorus are actually very important uh, for other functions around the body, not least for muscular contraction. This is another interesting place where the skeletal and the muscular systems uh, kind of work together. Uh, calcium and phosphorus are, are important, especially calcium, uh, for muscular contraction. Without calcium, there could be no muscular contraction. Um, and so if there's um, a, a reduced volume of calcium in the diet for a while, the bones will release some of that calcium out uh, so that muscle contraction can continue. Obviously, over the long term, that's going to be a problem because you're going to end up with osteoporosis and increasingly brittle bones and so on, which is not something you want. So uh, that calcium needs to be retained in the diet uh, in order to make the bones healthy, but also to allow muscular contraction. Uh, leverage or leverage if you're outside the UK um, just means the ability to move um, move the skeleton to, to lift and to move weight and so on um, and to move the body and it's predominantly an appendicular skeleton um, that this function pertains to so um, being able to move the arms and the legs and so on the appendicular skeleton as um, muscles pull on tendons and thereby move origins and insertions closer together so leverage or leverage uh, is is the sixth function uh, seventh um, weight bearing um, we um, we use our skeleton and the skeleton is solid and the in fact it's incredibly um, incredibly dense in terms of um, its structure um, and it can actually bear a great deal of weight so you can you know lift large amounts of weight um, and it's a skeleton that kind of takes the brunt of that weight bearing um, force um, so especially short bones, if you think about the bones of the of the feet in particular, obviously as you walk walk around all day, um, there's a there's a great deal of weight bearing going on as a result of um, being being bipedal, you know, walking on two feet and, and wandering around the place. Uh, the whole of your body weight is going through a handful of bones in the in the feet. Um, so one of the functions of the skeleton, therefore, is weight bearing. So structurally, um, those weight-bearing bones would be especially sort of short bones. Um, the tarsals would be a good example. Um, are structurally uh, designed to allow um, that weight-bearing. So they have to be very strong, um, and they, they carry the weight of other tissues, including the muscles and the other soft tissues in the body. Um, obviously, as we as we run and jump and land and so on, um, there is an impact. Um, to these weight bearing bones and it's one of the reasons why weight bearing exercise produces greater bone density especially in the bones that are predominantly weight bearing um, so there's a greater bone density because of bone remodeling which again there's a, uh, another one of my videos that you can watch um, about bone remodeling um, the density of the bones increases when we do exercise that is weight bearing exercise and then finally we're looking at um, the fact that the skeletal system helps uh, in certain cases to reduce friction across a joint. So the bones themselves, um, many of the bones uh, and many of the joints, particularly again, 
um, in the appendicular skeleton where movement is occurring. Uh, many of those bones um, have cartilage on, on their epiphyses, so the ends of the long bones, um, or they have a joint capsule around them which is uh, filled with synovial fluid on movement. Um, and, and those two things, synovial fluid in the joint capsule and cartilage on the epiphyses, helps to reduce the kind of the friction buildup, um, the heat that get, gets built up as a result of friction and so on, the contact between bones to make sure that we don't basically wear those bones away and cause long term damage to the bones. Uh, and then finally on this point, um, sesamoid bones such as the patella or kneecap. Um, also help to reduce friction across a joint by lifting tendons up and away from contact with the joint proper. So if you think about the patella, lifts the patella tendon um, just away from the, the rest of the knee joint uh, somewhat and, and also helps to guide the direction um, when the quadriceps contract, for example, um, to extend the knee. And the sesamoid bone of the patella lifts or keeps the keeps the tendons from uh, contacting the uh, the rest of the knee joint. So there's there's eight functions that we've looked at there. Um, just to briefly recap, we've got supporting framework, protection, attachment for skeletal muscle, blood cell production, store of minerals, leverage, weight bearing, and reducing friction across a joint. I hope that video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.